welcome to the first official sturgeon fishing video of the year we were actually sturgeon fishing back in memorial weekend but couldn't make a video out of those clips because a lot of them were corrupted so that's unfortunate but it don't matter we're here we're now at the columbia river as you guys can see me behind me first time here i don't know what to expect so we're just gonna kind of give it our go right now i am about to rig up my sturgeon rod and we're just gonna throw it out there so right now it's around seven o'clock at night so david and i we just got here so we're gonna see if we can pull a last minute fish before the night ends or before the day ends and, and then i don't know we'll see how it goes i mean like like i said first time so you don't really know what to expect but it should be a good time cheng has been out here a couple times and he said it's pretty good so uh let me rig up real quick and then i'll show you guys what i'm using so this right here is a 12 foot ugly stick it's the big water rod it's 12 feet extra heavy it's a two-piece my reel right here is the shimano torium 30 hg it's perfect for what we do and how we fish for sturgeon especially for bank fishing so right here this is 40 pound mono and then i'm going to show you guys my rig Come back this right here is my rig so i got a tri swivel got a tri swivel tail right there you guys can see this is my main line 40 pound tied to uni knot and then this is a 100 pound braid tied to a 7 aught barbless gamagatsu hook and then this is a piece of crappie and then uh, we just secured the crappie onto the hook right here by just using some 10 pound mono just threading through in and out of the meat and then tying it to the eye of the hook and then on the last eye of the swivel which is this one right here I have tied 25 pound mono filament and we have a 6 ounce 6 ounce pyramid weight we went to the store earlier today and they didn't have 8 ounce weights so we're just going to use 6 ounce and right here the water doesn't seem too fast so I don't think it should be too much of a concern so that's it pretty simple we're going to go out there and we're going to throw it out and hopefully we can land one before the day ends man the water is extremely high today you guys see here's our cooler right here it's in the water the water was actually way down there yesterday so it's morning can't really cast don't want to hit any of these branches up here so just a little swing and a cast and bring it back to the rocks here all right well today is july 3rd it's about five o'clock in the morning 506 just got two of our rods casted out there again water is extremely high this morning water is right here yesterday the water was right about here the shoreline and i am not exaggerating yesterday we could walk out probably like 20 yards out in front of us but the water rose a lot overnight so we're literally stuck right under these trees right here so we're just gonna give it a go water's pretty high so i don't know how that's gonna affect the fish's behavior but hopefully hopefully we get a land one or fight one here in just a few moments we'll see He's not fighting, but he's not moving. This guy's not budging, dude. Might just be a lazy oversize. This ain't no keeper, bro.
All right, 651. Been fishing for almost two hours. Finally got our first bite. Looks like it's an oversize. We had a boat coming up the river. I looked at the rod. The rod looked like it was just bouncing, like the weight was just bouncing off the bottom. When I held the rod, that's what it felt like. And set the hook, sure enough, fish on. He jumped once. I didn't see him jump, but probably oversized. Or he is oversized. I just don't know how big of an oversized, but hopefully we land this beast right here. It's pretty far out there. You lost it, yeah. He's not small. He's a big fish, man. What's in there? What's in there? Oh, yeah. Black, yeah. Oh. Damn. Yeah. What a beast. Yeah. I feel like there's some weight on my What's line. What's the fishing? 30 What's minutes of fighting. Fishing? He just came off. What's the fishing? Fishy gone. Yeah. We let fishy go. Ah, uh, fishy gone. Fishy too big. Ah. Uh, that's the seaweed. He's worried. Damn it, Dylan. He just came off. He just came off. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time, dude. He hooked himself. Yeah, dude. He's there, Take your time. He hooked himself. Huh? Watch. We look. We look. Uncle David hooked fishy. Oh, he's going, man. Yeah. 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 Like Dude, that's crazy. David went and casted his fishing pole at this little point over here. This is our little camping spot. And David threw probably five minutes. His drag started peeling, and the fish just jumped right over here. So he's probably a good 200 yards out from David. Dang, he's way out there. He's not as heavy as the other guy, right? Because it seems like you're barely trying. He's actually coming in. Here, I'll just come over you or under you. Yeah, there you go. Oh, right there, dude. Oh, he's not that big, dude. He's not too big. But. He's not too big, man. Dude, he's not big. Oh, he's pretty long. There he is, right there. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, here we go. <laughs> He's like a long man. All right, yeah, that's already. Hold on, put it right at the nose. 65, yes. 66. 65, yeah. 65. 65. Right here, six foot, five inches. There he goes. He's so out of energy. Right there. He's small, dude. He's not even fighting. I know. <laughs> Alright, let's hope. He's super small though. I don't even see it. Oh. oh that's tiny. Oh. <laughs> 
Oh, maybe. <laughs> nah, it's tiny. <laughs> yeah, let's take a picture. That's the first fish on this rod. All right, here you go. Retied a new piece of bait on. This bait is looking fresh, looking juicy. Every time you can, every time you have a chance to put on a new, juicier looking bait, always do it. Still using the same exact setup. Tri swivel, piece of crappie tied on, and my weight. So I actually changed my leader length for my weight. It's about right around a foot, a little over a foot, 14 inches about. And my piece of crappie is tied on. Some people always tell me like, you gotta use big bait. Nah, this is all you really need. It's just something simple, something small to give off the scent. That's all you need. Some money. Let's put in the rod holder. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna make sure our line comes stationary and our weight gets stuck on the bottom. That way our bait is stationary. That way when a fish comes, a big fish can bite it. All right now I can still feel my weight bouncing on the bottom. Just kind of waiting, put tension on it. Guys, look, my rod's a little bent. That means there's tension on it because the weight is stuck. It's stuck, not snagged. Big difference. Round two. Yeah, he's, on he's on, dude. Keeper. He's on, dude. Keeper, dude. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Man, it's been about probably eight hours from our last crappie bite. It's been a while. Literally sat all day just for this guy right here. Hopefully we don't lose this guy. I'm down. All right. How did they? Uh, turn off your clicker. <sighs> From my judgment, they does not feel that big. <sighs> He is way out there. Oh, he's got some fight in him. Here he goes. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I was gonna about I was about to reel, but he started running.
Yeah, this guy's a fighter. I don't want to force them up too much. I don't know where the line sprayed, but. Do you want a palm? Yeah. Or kind of, I think. Woo! Back workout. Come oh, on, we got this. You guys can see it's a beautiful sunset too. It's a gorgeous sunset. Beautiful scenery. Hopefully we'll land this fish. we we'll get some good pictures with the background. might be a little big he might be in the 60s yeah he's probably in the 60s right here I think that's a 60 incher his tail is pretty big that's a girthy fish dude it's a beautiful fish beautiful fish yes beautiful scenery for the sunset oh no watch out watch out okay. you're looking at 77 77 77 hey he doesn't even look that big We have about approximately one hour left to fish. I don't know if we're gonna catch anything. That was kind of a last minute fish, but who knows, we might have time to pull one more. Again, we're gonna stay until tomorrow morning, so we still have tomorrow morning to fish as well. But just having that fish just come after it, a drought is very, very rewarding. Our techniques were this morning, we were all using crappies. The morning bite was good for crappie. And then once I got to the afternoon, the crappie bite died down. Chang switched to squid, pickled squid, and Chang hooked two literally like back to back. And then after that, everything just kind of died. And then David with the last minute crappie fish right there. So sometimes you just got to play around with baits different times of the day. You know, apparently sturgeon want different kinds of things. So when we come sturgeon fishing, we always have at least two different baits. In this case, we have pickled squid and crappie. Pickled squid is always something we bring. It's always squid and something else. So in case you guys are wondering what we're using, that's what we're using today. We've caught them off of crappie and pickled squid. So. I believe today is July 4th, so happy July 4th to all of you. One last morning in the tent. All right, well, we've been sitting there all morning. It's been pretty dang slow. Where we're sitting back over here. I think David came over here primarily to just reel in and recast. Got over here and apparently perfect timing. Oh. All right, let's get our morning exercise in. I know, I, I thought you came over here just to recast. Is that fray just right there? Okay, well, it's gone.
he's not even fighting <laughs> but the current is just so strong oh oh he's gonna jump i think oh I don't know, he was running up. Oh. That might be some rocks right there. It's a good back workout. Oh, that was a sturgeon right there, too. That was a sturgeon right there, too. He wasn't that big. That was only like 20 yards out. Yeah, he jumped right, like, right in the current right there. Whew, Jinder, you want to pull? He's pretty close now. Okay. Yeah, he's got some good weight to him. He's not fighting, he's just coming in, but he's just a pretty heavy fish. Wow. He is way out there. Way out there. So the fish was right here earlier. He, he went down river all the way over here pretty far out there and he was gone the thing with him is he has the current to help him so he took it down current that's usually what fish do when you hook them they typically run downstream and so that makes turning them around and pulling them up against the current pretty dang hard so I would prefer heavier rods longer rods because it has a lot more backbone so you can turn the fish you have more torque on the fish finally got him in my back is burning. Good back workout. Yep, right there. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. One heck of a fight. Oh. It's okay. He's an oversized. Woo! That was a workout. Yeah. That's the downfall of that, the spot, man. You guys look, there's a lot of rocks. And right there, the line was just essentially getting cut by the rocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's he's pretty big. That was the first one of the day. Probably 75 inches maybe. Got to the shoreline, probably 10, 15 yards in front of us. And the line snapped. That's the downfall of fishing with a lot of rocks especially right here because it's super shallow so there's a lot of rocks and when it's super shallow like that you don't have a lot of room for air as opposed to if it's deep if it's deep the rocks are way on the bottom the fish is usually way on top but here it's so shallow where the fish is literally on the rocks as you're horsing them in so right when he turned around chain felt like the line just kind of scraped on the rocks a couple times and with just how much tension there is a little nip is all it takes for the fish to break off so it's okay, that was fun. At least we gotta pull something. We'll try to go back and uh, get fish number two for the day. Whew. All right guys, well, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. It's been a blast, especially coming out to a new spot that you know you haven't fished before and especially being able to catch some sturgeon for the first time in this spot. You know, that's pretty special. So the one thing you wanna do is always be observant. One of the things we noticed here, right here in this spot, is there's a lot of clams and there's a lot of crawdads. And so, a lot of times if you don't know what to use, just find bait along the shore 
there's a high chance that that's what the fish in this particular spot or wherever you're fishing are feeding on. So right here, there's a lot of clams and there's a lot of crayfish. So chances of sturgeon feeding on that is pretty dang high. So if you don't know what to use for bait, maybe just rig something like that up and just throw it out there. And, and you know, you, you never know. You might be pleasantly surprised about what you're going to catch. So this trip, we caught fish on crappie, squid. I actually caught a crawd out. I threw it out there. I got a hit, but I missed the hook set. Hooked into a, a lot of sturgeon, but we landed very few. This is probably by far one of our worst performances, meaning like we hooked so many sturgeon, but like we we lost over half half the fish that we hooked. And so that's unfortunate, but sometimes that's how it goes. This is the actual Columbia River. So right here, the water is really narrow. And so a lot of times the sturgeon, when they jump, they were actually within casting distance. And I think that's one of the reasons why we were actually so successful here hopefully you guys learned something hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video and i think that's going to wrap it up so i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching guys